Good afternoon and welcome to Resident Arcade. It is Wednesday night and we are live. Hello. As you can see, we've got Steve and Sam with us today. No Lou, so it should be quite a, I don't know, argument-free free show today. A more Possibly. baritone episode. A more baritone episode. <laughs> nice. Of course, I've, I'm full of cold as well, so I apologise if that interrupts or I sneeze all over the mic or anything like that during the show. For those of you new to the show, we are uh, just uh, three three blokes today, we're usually four, uh, that talk about games on a Wednesday night for a couple of hours. Uh, traditionally, we just start talking about what games we've been playing this week, so we'll start with that. You guys, got anything new you played? Uh, nothing new new. Um, Homeworld Remastered, the collection, which has been on uh, sale on Steam last week. Did you, did you mention that last week, or...? Uh, just no, telling no, us about I, it. I was just telling you guys about it, I think. Um, yeah, essentially, it's just exactly the same game, but it's uh, it's had the textures updated, models updated, uh, sound quality improved by Gearbox, I believe. All right. Um, Can you just remind me what Homeworld is? I'm sure you've mentioned it's it before. It's the uh, it's the 3D RTS, um, where basically you have the story's basically. The humans in it, although I, I don't think they're actually supposed to be humans, the people that you control, um, they get a message or they receive an encryption that basically gives them the direction to their home world. Obviously, there must be a space faring species for quite a long time. Uh, they then build this huge mothership in order to get to the said home world. After uh, the initial uh, like maiden voyage where they teleport, where they warp to the edge of the solar system and back, turns out that the planet that you've been residing on to be completely destroyed and all the population wiped out to you basically the rest Humbus. of your population now trying to survive in space okay cool but it's, so an, is it... it's an rts game yeah, yeah. 3d rts so is it set in in outer space you, are you on planets as well or no just in space so okay. uh, you have one massive mothership um uh, which acts as kind of like the center of your base if you will and then you build subsequent units, research units, and you know attack frigates, probes, and basically send them out around. But you can't move your mothership. I think I played I played it a little bit when it first came out. It was years ago, and I played it at oh, a LAN party. Time, yeah. uh, it was the nineties, wasn't it? It came out. Yeah. And um, I think I, I played the campaign, but I only I only got so far in it because, I, for one, I think it was a what we used to refer to as a Juarez version of it that I probably shouldn't be admitting to but um, and two I, f I think I found it quite difficult I, I don't think I got RTS's back then I didn't really play them that much I remember it being quite difficult when I first played it but one thing I've discovered on the replay is that formations are extremely important yeah whereas beforehand I, I don't think I really gave any consideration to what formation I was using to, to attack with a so when you select a unit, do you, is there a formation button? There's I, I loads mean, of formations, and obviously you can attack from above, from below, from the side, and as as your ships go into an attack, they kind of they split up again and have to come back round. Hmm. So the tactics that you use in order to get them... If you get them to completely disperse and come round, then they're easier to pick off. Right. So you've got to tell them to group and uh, form round. There's, there's loads of different things you can do on it. Right. So it's it's again, it's, it's another one of those things with RTSs where I find them a little bit too micromanagey for my liking you know i mean i like micromanagement a lot of the time but i don't know rts's don't sit with me very well for that uh, uh, but, uh, yeah, go on, sir. i was only going to say that rts is, is a genre that i think i would probably get into more if i played games on my computer more because i don't think they generally work that great on consoles the only ones that i've played is the really old school like the first command and conquer type of stuff and i enjoy them but it doesn't translate well to a console experience, so I've no, not delved into them that much. You need a keyboard and mouse. Even uh, even back on the days on the PlayStation, I remember playing XCOM. You could buy a Sony PlayStation mouse, and I only yeah, yeah. the playable with that. They were talking about PlayStation 4 mouse keyboards and Xbox One mouse and keyboards coming out as well, if they haven't already come out. I remember reading an article a few weeks ago about that. Um, well, obviously, there's no reason why you, you, you shouldn't be able to use a standard USB keyboard and mouse with it. Apart from there's probably some kind of content yeah, protection so. that yeah stops them or hardware protection in there. Um, the only RTS that I've played on a console was a 360 version of oh, it was Command and Conquer Legacy of Kane or Khan or yeah, Khan 
Khan's yeah, was, legacy. The, was that the bad guy? The, what were the bad? What the bad guys called? The red guys in that? What were they? That the, was the, the red, red guys. guys. <laughs> yeah, there was the, the Brotherhood of Nod. Is that it? Like that. Yeah, <laughs> no, it was. It was Nod. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, and it was but, like the Earth Defense Force or whatever was the were the yellow guys. The only way that they could get it working on console was you, you held down a trigger button and it came up with a radial wheel of all of the selections you could do and you could you could choose i don't think you had a cursor but you could choose your units or you could choose groups it really didn't work anyway I'd, yeah. even though i don't like the micromanaging aspect of them it's still i'd prefer to have that than what they they gave you on this pc uh, on this console version yeah so are you enjoying it in general i guess is the question i've only really played a couple of hours of it to be honest and i'm not sure whether any of that's nostalgia or whether i am actually enjoying it it's it's fun, um, but I have to see like, how much longevity it's got. Hmm. I found that with a lot of old games when I go back to them. I'm a little bit like, oh, this is brilliant. I've just been playing something myself, and I'm not sure. I might, it's actually a good game anymore, you know? <laughs> it might have been good yeah. when it came out. but And there's a lot of games out there that, that need playing, so it's, it's whether or not it's worthwhile spending the time playing through a remastered game. Hmm. Yeah. I have a similar feeling with older games where I think a lot of the time it comes down to the age at which you played it, that your own, not only your own gaming experiences, but your own like cultural life experiences were more limited. So you appreciated something like that more, whereas today you might want more out of it. You might expect more from a from a computer game than what old games could sometimes offer. You know, it's just the way of things. Games have become more advanced than they used to be. There's no question. But there are also some gems out there. Like, I mean, I, I said I've been playing, I'm not replaying because I didn't play the original, but I've been playing that Dungeon Keeper and it's still brilliant. Yeah. And I can't I can't picture many, many games that have that same kind of management feel about it that's fun at the same time as being uh, complex, you know, in some, in some respects. Um, okay, so Sam, you say you've not played anything. You've not even played... Uh I've been, I've got to the point in putting The Witcher in there because it's once I, until I've completed it, it's just there. I've not played much. I just don't have anything else to say about it, so I've, I've not got any games to speak about this week. Sorry. Well, there are a few things about The Witcher uh, in the news later on that we'll go through, but uh... I've um, I've been playing a few more games. Like yeah, yeah. Um, I finally broke and bought Alien Isolation. What we said break. I didn't know that that was a. No, it was something where obviously any. Well, for me at least, anyway, any Alien game or anything attached to the Alien franchise, the Predator franchise, does draw a lot of interest because, you know, they're, uh, they're something I grew up with and they are quite you know, for personal favourites. Yeah. Um, Alien Isolation had a lot of, uh, a, quite a big buzz around it. But it didn't and get negative reviews, though, did it? It didn't get negative, but it didn't get overwhelmingly positive reviews either. Got better it reviews got, than Colonial Marines. Yeah, it got generally fair. positive reviews, I should, I should say. Yeah. I think it's got like an 8 out of 10, a Metacritic kind of score, isn't it? Yeah, um, and obviously listening to a few reports from people that I know who had the game, it just didn't really kind of, I don't know, I held off until it came down in price, basically. And uh, I think it was, it's been on sale on Steam for around about £10, £12. That's pretty cheap. Uh, with all the DLC as well, which is a pretty good deal. Right. Um, so I downloaded that and installed it, and uh, it's frustrating. In what respect? In the fact that it's it's just, it's one of them games that purposely builds tension and anxiety, and it does it really well. <laughs> that's what I haven't bought, that's why I haven't bought it, because I, I can't be dealing with that. I can't be dealing with going to bed like a bag of nerves. It's just, uh, I mean, the, the styling of the game is fantastic. I, I love the way how they've kept everything 70s. So all the computer screens within the game are all kind of all green screen uh, the, um, CRTs. Yeah, you haven't tried to modernise it beyond what it was originally. Yeah, I like that. I, I've seen I've seen footage of the game. It looks like they've clearly used the films and a lot of photo reference and yeah, gone. Definitely. We're going to make it look like the way that Ridley Scott envisioned the future looking in his yeah. version of Alien. Before yeah, it came out, there was a, a lot of buzz around that. That was one of the selling points of it. I think uh, that they that kept, you... kept it original. I'm um, I'm sure I've heard that the Nostromo features in it at some point as well. Well, um, the premise of the game is that 15 years after their Ripley's disappeared, her daughter, who obviously you only find out about in the director's cut version of Alien, mm. um, she basically goes on a mission for the company um, 
the, uh, the tea search is just a happy coincidence, by the way. I wasn't wearing that <laughs> purpose. Um, she goes on a mission for the company in order to retrieve the kind of like the flight recorder from the uh, the Nostromo to the uh, was it Staliagelik or was it space station? Okay. Uh, and then things go awry. Yeah, I mean, how have you found? I've had uh, that the general criticism of the game is that the alien is inconsistent. Uh, in that it's great and it's really scary, but sometimes it just gets you when it shouldn't. Like it just magically appears and gets but, you when it's not fair for it to do that. When I first started playing, um, I noticed that there's there's a few things that are a few events that are scripted within the game itself. So I found that at certain points you can actually go on and explore everything, and then once you pick up a certain object, then the next kind of bit of the game will kick in. Then you've got to be really quiet and creep around and avoid stuff. That only lasted for so long, and now now that I'm kind of playing the game proper, I've passed the you know the tutorials and the intro section of you. It seems to be that the alien can now just appear at any time. Again, that was, that was another one of the yeah. points of the game, isn't it? It's uh, there's times that, that it will always appear. So the, there's still scripted parts in there. When you walk over a certain step, then you'll see a steam come from the you know the ventilation shaft and it'll clamber down. But then beyond that. It can also just appear anywhere as well when it's active within that area. Yeah, I mean, have you got the terrifying bit? Have you got the little bit bit motion sensor iconic thing? Because that's kind of yeah, it's not as good as obviously the aliens one, but it's a little bit better than the the, than the motion sensor in the original Alien Mm -hmm. movie. Um, so you've you've got to more or less kind of crawl around with that held out all the time, changing your focal point. Mm. So you either focus on that or you focus on what's happening in front of you and creep around and then always be on the lookout for somewhere to hide in case it just comes up. See, I quite like my survival horror games, so I think, I've often thought that Alien Isolation might be a good one for me, but I just feel so, I felt so protective of my own emotions about Alien that I don't want to besmirch it by playing a shit game, do you know what I mean? Even though that's got good reviews, I've still not bought it, I think I might wait for it to be cheap on the PS4, then I might give it a go. Which is probably, well, that's exactly the same kind of uh, approach that I had with it. But yeah. I've, I've I paid a tenner for it and I'm more than happy with my purchase. I'd say it's it's, it's well worth more than that. I mean, it's, apparently it's, the atmosphere is great and stuff, isn't it? That's basically what everybody said. It's tempting, but I, I don't know. Again, it's the same argument that you just had a minute ago. It's so many other games... And that's not one I particularly want to play. It's, it's not because I think I'll spoil Aliens for myself, or Alien, sorry. I think it's because I don't really like the tension side. That's that's what that's what's putting me off. It's the scares and the jumps. So I think I'll... Uh... It's not so much jumps, it's just like... Like, there'll be certain points where you'll get at the end of it and you'll have to call a transport uh, lift. Huh. And you'll press it, and the music will start getting more tense. And you're like, well, I know it's coming, and this is coming. One of them's going to get here first, so yeah. like, and then and then the lift and then the lift gets there the lift and he doesn't there, show the doors up. Open, and he's and there. started going, and then he's right behind you. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Plus, I mean, Chris, you're not from what I know about you. You're not that into the survival horror games in general as a no. as a genre. It's not something that you're like particularly into. No, not but, I'm not I'm not into them at all. I mean, I've got Dead Space One and Two uh, because they came free in some bundle or whatever. Uh, I, I think I got Dead Space one for free on Origin as well, on top of Steam. But I'm, um, I don't know. I, I keep trying to play them, and Dead Space two is really quite, quite got a good balance between the action and the and the scares. It's very much like you see stuff, you see a, a grate in the wall, and a monster might jump out of it, and then a monster does jump out of it. So it's not really scary, scary. You just kind of got to make sure you can serve your ammo and blast the shit out of everything. Yeah. So that might be more enjoyable because it's got a lot of shootery stuff in it as well and a really cool again like that alien game looks like it's got a really cool future aesthetic like design to it as well i recommend dead space 2 if you're going to play any of them dead space 2 is the best one out of like all those See, dead, space, dead games. space is just one of them again it's there's a door and you're gonna to have to go through it and you know when you go through it you're going to get attacked by something like long and wriggly with tentacles yeah that is you, you, you just don't want it to happen but you know you can't go any further so you, I kind of do what's it. happening because I like I quite like the whole point. What gets me about survival horror as a genre, or just horror games in general, is the idea that you go, "Oh God, this thing might kill me," and then you beat it, and you're like, "Ah, ah, oh," and then you get that little 
thing and you go and do it again in like two minutes. Doesn't doesn't do anything for me that I don't care. I don't care about beating something. I just care about getting through a game without shit in my pants, basically. Yeah. I yeah. Uh, I said I, I, every time we talk about survival horrors or any kind of horror game, I go back to Clive Barker's Undying because it was terrifying that game back in the day. Now we look at the graphics, it's awful. But I bet I bet if I played it again I'd still shit my pants because it's still full of that tension and that kind of eeriness about it and, and it's it's yeah. Doesn't do anything for me. Mm-hmm. Right, so I've played uh, played a bit of Terraria this week, obviously. I think that's uh, that's a given. In fact I played more of Terraria than anything else again. We've got into hard mode now and we're uh, we're fighting off well, we, we haven't actually fought any of the mechanical bosses yet, but the, the three bosses that you fight in, in the easy mode or the early mode of Terraria, you have to refight, and they're ten times harder. So that's going to be interesting when we actually do get to that point. Um, I've been playing a little bit of Prison Architect as well, but I've also just been playing a bit of Pixel Piracy, which is, a, from what I can tell, it's a 2D roguelike, and it looks like it's, it's written by... Um, the same people that did Terraria, and I didn't know this, or at least it's published by Relogic uh, that, that did Terraria. And it's essentially, you're a, you're a pixel pirate, you know, you're a little pirate. And from what I gather, I've played maybe 30 minutes of it, maybe 40 minutes of it just today. You, you, you start on a little ship, and you have to visit islands, and then you have to go out into the sea, and it's each each island is a screen, essentially. You double-click on a map icon, it takes you to another island, or a, a, a ship battle, or a town, and you go and buy things in towns, and you speak to people and get quests and stuff. But from what I can tell is you basically build up your crew, give them, you know, upgrade them, give them extra skills, etc. And then you board ships, but you once you've boarded a ship, the ship might be bigger than yours or whatever. You start off with a really simple, like, platform, essentially. And um, you have to keep, like, getting better ships. And if you don't want to take the ship over, if it's not grand enough or yours is better or you've invested a lot of time in building it up and making extra stuff on it um, to, to put on it, you uh, you you get... Uh, you, you can plunder the ship and you get loads of money for it. And it actually, it, to be fair, so far, I played 40 minutes and it took me a little bit to get my head around, but I think I'm now into it and I think I'm going to probably give it a bit more time. Um, it's, it's again, I can't even remember where I got it from. Is it, uh, is it uh, side-scrolling or isometric or what? It's 2D side-scrolling. It's really pretty looking. It's got lots of, it's got, um, it's got bloom and, uh, you know, nice blur going on in it on the background and, it's got lovely reflections in the water. It's, it's too, kind of a, it's a two D game, but there's like a two point five D. You know, you can see the front of the world and the back of the world, but you are definitely a two D, um, yeah, yeah, two D character. It's got perspective, but it's still five <coughs> scroll. Yeah, um, but it's. I said it's. It's so far, I'm quite enjoying it, and it looks. As I said, it, it looks like it's a roguelike as well. So, but it's not that. I, I also died once, and I. It reloaded from a, a previous save or an auto save somewhere, so it's obviously not a full, full on rogue like. Anyway, I'll, I shall report more on it next week, but I'm quite enjoying this so far, and sounds like it's a bit of a time waster. So I'm gonna give it a bit more. Cool. Um, some little little cool things in it as well that uh, you can you can build up your ship, and I think by the looks of it, you just end up getting loads more of loads more extra pirates that you can either hire or you can recruit from islands or you can um, get from certain quests. But you also pick up pets, and then you can pick you can assign pirates to all these different um, tasks on you. One of the, one of the ones is cleaning the poop deck. Everything shits on your boat constantly, like all the animals and all the pirates just shit on the boat. Literally, the pirate, yeah, because pirates that's what they're like. Yeah, they're too um, busy, you know, being pirates to bother going to the toilet. They just there's a, there's a lot of dynamics in it as well. I mean, I, I boarded a ship, the reason I died is I boarded a ship that was basically had seven pirates and I only had three and uh got on and, and they ended up kicking some of my pirates overboard. And if you don't have the swimming skill for that particular pirate, it'll just drown and you've lost him immediately. But all three of my pirates got thrown off a pod, so I was like, oh, bugger it. But I think, again, it's one of those, it's a learning curve. I think if you started again, I'd probably do better this time, you know, than, than I have done. Because I think I lost a few pirates at the beginning just because I didn't really know what I was doing. I didn't really know what, you know, how how many pirates at what level you'd need to fight somebody. It's not very clear. It kind of just throws you in the deep end and you, there's a help button and it's just got reams of text on it to, you know, to 
figure out what what's going on in the game. But it's, it's been my favourites on Steam for a while, so uh, I've decided to have a play of it. I'm glad I did. All right, so that's uh, that's me. Anyone else got any other games to play this week? Um, I've had a quick go of a game called Polybridge. All right. Uh, which is just a 3D bridge building game. Uh, indie to, uh, to everyone, but it's it's USPs. You can kind of do stunts on it. Right. So you don't have to have a complete bridge. If you get enough speed in a ramp, you can actually jump over it or you can jump and bounce off a hot air balloon. Right. It's, is it? it's, it's got quite a big following now to the point where it's it's got its own subreddit where people are submitting animated gifs of these like crazy jumps and stunts that they've been doing going across it uh, is it uh is it like first person perspective is it because you build the bridge and then you do stunts on it as well so what, yeah it's, that? It, it's all kind of third person high up isometric view uh you can change the camera angle actually um you build in a purely 2d mode and then you watch it run in 3d Cool. Can you like share the, your your own weird stunt bridges with other people and let yeah, them work? Yeah, that's over what them? Uh, that's what Reddit's been, I think. Cool. That sounds like it might be a laugh. She's just uh, slashing a poly bridge. How long's it been out? Uh, not very long, I think. Uh, I'm not actually sure whether it's early access or it's. Uh... It sounds like uh, it sounds like quite a few other games that that are out, but obviously this stunt thing is a bit different. Um, uh, it's been released. It was released on the thirtieth of June. This All year. right, so it's not been too long then. Yeah. Oh. It's, uh, it's it's decent if you like, you know, three D constructor games. Yeah, I do. I quite. I've always enjoyed those those bridge builder games. You know, like bridge builder or bridge constructor. And there was one that came out years ago on a flash game. Uh, one of the first ones, I think. And uh, you, it's very similar. All of them have got the same kind of mechanic. Is I'm assuming it's similar to that. You just use girders and yeah, it's steel girders, wood, road platform, steel cables, all them type of things. But they said the uh, the difference being is that you can do a lot of stunts and like trick jumps and it's 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 worth a go if you got like a little bit of free time to kill. Fair so, enough. If you want to see what it's like, first of all, check out the subreddit. Okay, so let's move on. Let's move on to the uh, the way of the exploding list. Let's not bother with the it. camera shakes. Can't be asked. Uh, please not. I'm, I'm ill this week. Can't be bothered. Um, has anyone got any ideas to start off with? Um, I try to think. I'm getting to the point now with ideas where I'm wondering which ones we've already done before. Like I've thought of one, but I'm like I'm sure we've done this already. So I don't know if anybody's in chat that's got one. Or has anybody else got one? So yes, yeah, so those who, of you who may be listening, who haven't uh, haven't heard what this this section is about before, we just basically have fifteen minutes where we talk about a list of something in a game or in games that are uh, interesting to talk about. So favorite weapons, uh, most most explosive cinematic moment, best dogs we've had before. I think <laughs> best canines in game, you know that kind of thing. Mm. So, I mean, I've, I've still got one from last week, which is the licensed music uh, in games, but I, I, it's a bit dodgy, when that you, one. When you say licensed, you mean when they've bought a, a real song from the, you know, so, like the Grand Theft Auto radio songs and stuff, is that what you mean? So, I'm, so games that are defined by them by their licensed music, so basically I'm talking about things like uh, Need for Speed, uh, GTA, GTA's, okay. you know, GTA San Andreas was easily like the best Kind oh of, yeah. Um, so anyway, that's that was my suggestion. So if nobody else has a suggestion, we could go with that. I'm up for talking about that one. I can't think of any off the top of my head. Okay. Well, so I'll, GTA San Andreas, the uh, the whole rock channel, basically on that. For me, Video though. X was that was awesome. it, uh, with with Her Herb no, um, Sage. Sage. <laughs> I am Sage. I don't conform to your whatever. Yeah. She was great, Sage. But yeah, okay. so the, the one with uh, with Laszlo. On? Uh, that was that was, uh, that was in Vice City. That was um, that was also good. That was, that was um, uh, V Rock. And that was like all the eighties like metal on there. Um, that was a good station as well, actually. But I mean, I got I've got a lot of my music tastes from that kind of stuff as well. Because I mean, when I first started playing the GTA games, and the same goes for another game I'll mention in a minute. I was only really starting to get into rock music and metal music and the, you know the heavier stuff that I'm into, and it kind of opened me up. To mm. the, the really heavy stuff that I like these days. Um, 
but yeah, so I, another one that comes that springs to mind is Tony Hawk's Pro Skater Two, and I've mentioned it a few times. Yeah, because that, Bridge Against the Machine, Gorilla Radio. Uh, nah, nah. Oh, that's, probably, that's it. Copyright done. They can't do any yeah. more of the song than that. <laughs> but we'll get content flagged if you do that. That was three <laughs> notes. Can I get away with that? Yeah, I'm not sure how it works. Um, that that basically all of the skater music on that again just got into it. Blink One Eight Two, um, some forty forty one. I don't know some forty one ones, but they definitely had they had like Papa Roach on there as well, so oh, it wasn't some all good. Some forty one was definitely on there, definitely. I can't remember which tune, but I, I remember getting into them from that. In fact, the Stag Beetle has just said uh, the the it's Tony Hawk's Pro Skater two. I'm not sure if he sees he's how far behind he is, but yeah, yeah. Um, the original Wipeout and Wipeout 2097 for that matter. What, yes, what, I've music. not played them enough. So, what kind of music is on those? Uh, Electro, uh, dance, techno. Prodigy had a couple of songs on uh, 2097, Prodigy, didn't they? Um, Shall I think who was it who uh, who done Messagey? Oh, I don't know. Not, not, not my genre. <sighs> I wouldn't know as much. But yeah, I remember playing. Uh, I think a mate's copy of 20, 2097. And it was one of them where it's like it, that music is not the kind of music I would go out and buy, but it was really good for the atmosphere. Yeah, it's like really the future. Good shit, yeah violent racing with that kind of music on it is really appropriate for that kind thought, of game. I thought it must be something like that, but I, I, I haven't played it enough to, to know. It was all like kind of stuff, but it was really it good. That's what really we wanted. Good. Yeah, it was, it was really uh, fit the atmosphere of the game. Now, we've got we've got a game coming up that's coming out soon that we've done a lot of talking about that's got a, a fully licensed track by... Um, shit... In fact, you'll be able to tell me as soon as I tell you. Snishit. That new artist. Um, oh my god, I've forgotten the name of the bloody game as well. That Space Explorer one. No Man's Sky, that's it. There we go. Um, oh, right, yeah. That's uh, 60 Days of Static, that's it. They're, they're actually commissioned. They've been commissioned. What ri originally happened is the devs asked 60 Days of St Static if they could use their music in the game, and 60 Days of Static came back and said, actually, we'll write you an album for it. So they've come back and they're, they're at, it's licensed, but you know it's obviously going to be uh, released beside it. But it's for the actual game. I think that's quite cool, and I think their music is going to hopefully suit that kind of space exploration thing. Although they're, they're, apparently, I've kind of read a few interviews on this. They're going to try and make it fit in with uh, with the world and make say, it. They're going to keep to their horse rock slash math rock. Yeah. Style. I've, no, I've I not think, heard I've, them. Um, if you want to. A, quite an identifiable tune by them. Do a search for Radio Protector. Okay, that's kind of like their most recognisable song. Yeah, there's. Um, but they, I, I read an interview and they said that they they were really excited to do it. Obviously, they're obviously going to say that, aren't they? But they're really excited to do it, and it's kind of like they they've spoke to the dev in quite a lot of detail, and they've they've what they're doing is with the music, and and this this is interesting to me as, as someone who's. You know, being a musician in the past, or I certainly wouldn't say I'm a musician now, but you know, enjoyed making music. That they're going to try and make it, um, because the universe is almost infinite. They're going to try and make the music kind of fit into that. So it's going to be like a pr procedural music, lots of different layers, lots of different. Well, that's kind of what uh, post rock is, anyway. Well, no, no, uh, yes, yes, but post rock still, uh, unless you listen to someone live. Post rock is still recorded on an album. This is going to this is going to change based on what's going on in the game dynamically, yeah. and and that to me sounds really interesting, and I'm I'm quite interested cool. to see I mean, how they do it. Other games have done that before, but it's it's a good thing to do in games. It's something that I really like. The game score can do it. I mean, uh, you know, you you've got the simple the simple change in music in a game like Oblivion or Skyrim when you encounter a baddie, you get their battle music. It's not as subtle. I'm guessing what they're going to do is something more like Portal 2, which I've talked about before, is how Portal 2, as you were going through a level, if you were, as you were solving the puzzle, the music would start to grow and it'd start, going, da, 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 and it'd start being more yeah, yeah. noticeable as you were doing stuff. So I'm hoping it'll be like that, where the music's already there, but they're just, like, they might be doing, they might be walking around the planet and it's cool and you've got, like, a nice, I don't know, a guitar or a synth melody, and then as something happens, the same synth melody, like, gets more aggressive or something. That might be a good way to do it if they do that there well, will be a we'll finite see, cut off point there will only be a certain amount of music recorded there has so to it's be. not there's no such thing as infinite well, <laughs> uh, well it depends on how they do it and how they layer it all etc i suppose but we'll see we'll see won't we i mean it may just be 
conjecture they may not be doing anything like that. It might just be full like recorded soundtracks that they're just gonna blend into each other in a yeah I don't know interesting way. We'll find out, won't we? Um, in, in terms of uh, licensed music, uh, I was gonna try and look it up, but uh, the browser's been really slow. Um, probably thanks to Skype. But that that song that plays in Red Dead Redemption when you're in uh, Mexico was this, was a licensed song, and there's also another licensed song in Red Dead Redemption when you go to your house uh, as well near the end of the game. Uh, the two like they to use two licensed songs that are not part of the soundtrack in Red Dead Redemption, and they're both used brilliantly. They're both used literally because you've got a long distance to travel on your horse, but it's a a, a very good point in the story where it makes sense for that music to be there. And the two times that it does it, and I've I'm not gonna, I can't give credit to the two people because I don't have their names to hand, but the two songs are really really fit in well and they're really well done. So that was like licensed music again in a Rockstar game. Who are they're really good at doing licensed music yeah, well yeah. they can be good i would say grand theft, both grand theft auto 4 and 5 were very disappointing to me the radio like I, I, not I agree, a lot of yeah. music that i enjoyed even in uh, san andreas you know i'm not massively into all hip-hop but they had some good classic hip-hop tunes and they had the classic radio station with classic rock one which played like your linen skin and stuff like that that was cool and you had that i think you had like a fusion channel as well like a, a weird thingy channel was that on I don't know, but that had like a good selection of radio stations you, where you, I enjoyed something from all of them. You know why four and five don't appeal to you? It's modern music. Because you're getting old, yeah, and it's good it's old people music. Only kids and their bloody electrics. Uh, even, yeah. even the rock bands, I can't be asked with these days. Well, not some of them anyway. Some of some of them are still quite cool. Uh, hello, bloody dumb steps. Uh, Sorry. Uh, hello to De music. Uh, Velev. I just wanted to say hello to someone in chat who said hello to us. Develev, hello. Uh, and Stag Beatles also mentioned um, Michael Jackson Thriller. Uh, is Well, not just Thriller. Uh, quite a lot of Michael Jackson music's been used in my, the Michael Jackson games, like the arcade game. I can't, was that actually Moonwalker. called Thriller? Moonwalker. Moonwalker. Yes. Yeah. That's a, a good, good honourable mention. We don't really need to talk much about that, but, <laughs> you know. Yeah. What are you going to say, Steve? What are you saying, Steve? Sorry. Uh, I was I was going to say that one of the issues with uh, with licensed music in games is that it's not very often these days that you get a game set today or now or in this kind of our sphere, is it? Our sphere of existence. So sure. it's not normally that applicable to put what you'd call pop music or rock music on there. It depends. I mean, actually, uh, that brings me to another point. Uh, another game series that's done it really, really well. Bioshock, putting that... because they didn't use uh, Infinite, used a lot of uh, songs from the eighties, but they did their own versions of them. Like they did, everybody wants to. Did everybody wants to rule the world? But they did their own like barbershop quartet versions yeah, yeah. of them or things like that. Um, well, and that... obviously, the original Bioshock had a lot of nineteen, I think, forties and fifties crooner type songs woven throughout that world they might be playing on the radio as you're walking around someone's house or something that also that makes really me think about um fallout fallout 3 because uh, uh, i mean the the intro to that the intro video to that it's stuck in my mind forever just because of that one that one tune mm. i don't want to set the world on fire that one uh, that, yeah that comes to my head all the time and i didn't even know the song before then no no i don't think i'd heard it before then um uh, as we were talking then, another one sprung to mind, and then as we were talking, I also forgot it. It went in and out of my brain. In it one was little... uh, the intro sequence to, uh, not the intro, I said the first, the first main level on Battlefield 4, when you're doing the car chase and it's got turn around. Oh, I've not played 4. That was quite common. Oh, also, that's what everybody did. Uh, the opening sequence to Blood Dragon, Far Cry Blood Dragon, where you've got that song from yeah. Predator. You got the the, yeah. the Gatling gun and you're like doing the Predator thing, but it's all in like neon eighties like ridiculousness. <laughs> but it's such a cool little thing. Anybody that's seen Predator will be like well into that. <laughs> so does anybody in chat have any ideas about this then? And uh, other licensed music in games that is I don't know that's that's stuck in your mind. I mean, obviously GTA is an obvious choice, isn't it? I mean, I, I'm I'm struggling now. Yeah, I mean, I mean, again, Vice City, again, so many just, they really cemented themselves in the period they were going for. They did it in San Andreas as well, but the eight, like the 80s is such an easily definable, like, period in history. By the music alone, like, all the, you know, you got, you got Michael Jackson songs on there again, the Billy Jean was on there, and uh, you got to be starting something was on there as well. Like, there's so many, uh, 
oh, so many just ridiculously cheesy 80s songs, which I don't like in real life. But I love them when I'm playing Vice City because um, I'm in that world and it's just like part of it. Oh. Give me a second, it'll come to me. <laughs> oh, um, not Grand Theft Auto. The, Does the Saints the, Row have licensed music? Saints Row licensed, yeah. That, that had quite a few in the most recent one. It had. Um, oh, what was it? Uh, it was some like. Daft 90s kind of trance music that was playing. It adds uh, the Aerosmith song at the very beginning where you save where you're climbing up the rocket. <laughs> Which Aerosmith song? Um, I don't know that many. I don't want to miss a thing. Is it Aerosmith? Or... God, really? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd played it, Chris. The, no, the, the most recent one's five, isn't it? Five, four. Them, uh, not four. Not four. There hasn't been a five yet. Yeah. There might be. You know what? I played that much of it that I don't remember the rocket scene at all. I played it's, it to that's... death. That's pretty much when uh, when you first start the game. It's the first I, I first really, sequence where you actually take control, <laughs> and it I, does a little piss take of um, was it Armageddon? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. As, well, you, as think, you're climbing up, you're getting all the saints radio on you and telling you how much they love you and what they think about you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I that sounds pretty funny, actually. Love the tongue in cheek aspect of that game. Like everything about it, all the little nods to all the other games that it does, and all the little. And there was there was a moment where I think he you. you you, you're in a 1950s house and you're walking around like this, and uh, you just you're just trying to act like no 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 like a, a 19, it's just the way he walks is ridiculous. I love I just love the daftness of that game. It feels like they threw it together in five minutes, but it also plays really well. I, I, I can't can't uh, there go. Go. but there's a lot. I suppose there's a lot of licensed music in that though, isn't there? He is, he is. Again, radio stations all over the place. I mean, there's a lot of games have used licensed music, but it's just not, uh, they're not necessarily iconic songs. Like, I think, you know, Metal Gear Rising had quite a lot of licensed music in it, but it wasn't by big bands that you'd have heard of. It was just, it was a lot of, like, speedy, metal-y kind of stuff, because, again, it fit the tone of the game, but it wasn't, uh, I don't think it was written for the game. I think it was licensed, but it's not, it doesn't stand out. That's the kind of stuff that's probably happened more often than you might think. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, that it's not not like a song you can't pick out like a Billy Jean or something, which is like an iconic tune. But yeah, there's, there's a lot of examples of that. Probably like I'm, I imagine, I imagine a lot of musicians. Um, when I was speaking to musicians about composers about music for my game, it's a lot of musicians tend to put a license. You know, they they offer licenses for their music, even if they write it for the game instead of outright give it to the company be so they continue to make money afterwards so it's all licensed but go on um, say Giza War Mad World is that, is that the only track though because the whole I mean it's licensed again but it's all Steve Jablonski Steve Jablonski written, written it specifically for Giza War but was it the Mad World the, the Gary Jules the Gary the Jules version. version the piano version yeah, yeah. that must be the end though. But um, it was, it was, I don't know because it, doesn't it play? Um, it, it it was on the trailers for the first one. I don't think it actually featured in the game, but in the third one, where spoiler alert, yeah. uh, where Don dies, um, it plays again. There, everything goes in slow motion. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I that is that, that, that sure. Yeah, the end. It's, it's definitely a licensed one because, as we talked about before, it wasn't written for that game. It was. I don't know if it was written for the film, but the first time I heard it was in the film Donnie Darko, and it was yeah. released as a single and did pretty well. Well, that was a Tears for Fears version, wasn't it? Yeah, I was going to say that was a much slower version of it, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was originally a Tears for Fears song. Um, okay. I remember there was, a, there was a David Bowie one. Um... David Bowie? Well, I'll tell you what, shall we revisit this? Uh, in Labyrinth. the future if we come up with anything else <laughs> yeah. it's Labyrinth the game, um, Labyrinth game he's just though, thrusting, it, thrust, thrusting his crotch at the screen it's, Ooh, it's, you don't want to go that way it's not the one I was looking for but apparently Space Oddity plays in Alan Wake and I played through Alan Wake all the way and I couldn't so remember I. Space Oddity in there. neither do I okay. there you hmm. go okay, so, so let's move on let's move on to the uh, news section so gaming news new releases, anything that's coming up that we're excited about. We didn't get a chance, because it was our first birthday last uh, week, we didn't get a chance to to go through the news. So we've we've carried last week's news on to this week. So if this is a little bit old, then sorry, but don't care. We'll probably skip over a few of them as well. Uh, 
So, so uh, again, guys, is there anything that you guys have come across in the last week or two that's that's do you want to talk about immediately, or shall I just go through the uh, list as normal? Right. Yeah, I just go, just go through. Okay, so Razor acquires Ouya. Now, Ouya have been having lots of problems, I believe. Um, Ouya, uh, do you know what Ouya is, Sam? I'm sure we've talked about it. Is it um, is it a, a virtual reality uh, thing? No, no, it's a, it's an indie kickstarted console, and it's. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. T it's a, uh, as far as I understand, I'm not an expert on this. I haven't really been following it that much, I'll be honest. But it's a tiny little console that uh, was basically giving indie developers an incentive to develop on it. So what they've done now is they've sold it to Razer. Sorry, Steve. It's, um, it's Android, isn't it? Yes, yes, it's on Android as well, which is again a open, kind of op more open platform for people to develop on uh, than any of the uh, what do you call them? Pr preliminary, pre, pre. What the Primary. Yeah, uh, the, the the closed you know PlayStation Four SDK systems and everything. Anyway, it was it was basically they offered an incentive, and I can't remember the numbers exactly, but they offered a monetary incentive to indie developers to release their games on Ouya uh, exclusively for a limited time, obviously. But they, they they offered an incentive, and that incentive basically was broken. Now this the sale has gone through, so. Even though that's happened, Razer have apparently come back and said, and this may have advanced since I last read an article on it, but um, Razer have come back and said, we're going to honour some of this money, but not they're, they're not honouring all of it anyway. I'm going to paste some articles into chat. Um, because the in, uh, so basically indie developer community is kicked off about it as well. I'm not sure who put that in chat, because it wasn't something I was uh, following particularly. Must have been Lou last week. Must have been Lou last week. He probably would have known more about that. Um, yeah, but yeah. It's not. I mean, I can understand them being. If it was sold on that on, on that um, promise, then yeah, it is. A, it sounds like it could be a legitimate gripe on the indie developers part. If they're saying we want you to develop for this system, particularly, there's an incentive to do so. And yeah, now that it's been sold off, so I'm just. Uh... There was there was a note in the. I did read the little accompanying article about some region in the hundred and sixty thousand dollars worth of uh, of payoffs. 620 it's saying here 620 was it it may very well have been updated or something since <coughs> there you go razor will make good on money owed to devs through the free the, the games fund initiative 62 620 thousand dollars to developers they're going to pay out uh, so basically it's after indie devs have kicked off and, and to be fair i'm not surprised i think i think it was something to do with the kickstarter as well that uh i don't know i can't remember exactly all right, moving on. So Fallout Four apparently has some non-violent playstyles, which is interesting for a Fallout game. Now, yeah, the game that the game that in its trailer, the big or the the E three conference half an hour of footage they showed made a big point of of making someone's head explode with a teddy bear fired out of a cannon. Yes. So that's like one extreme to the other, which I quite like actually, because it it's a nice option to not have to blow everyone's brains off. Oh, out. Sorry. So not have to make, make people explode. It's like maybe it could be to do with stealth gameplay or it's well apparently dialogue it, options. It's you cannot play the game one hundred percent stealth. Apparently, it's not. Um, there are certain parts where you have to kill things, but there are people who have apparently there are people who have done um, Fallout Three uh, stealth runs. Although you still have to kill people, you know what's it called pacifist runs. Mm. Um, but it's still not the not the not the case here. You can you can maybe try and be a pacifist in in Fallout Four, but I think you still basically have to kill some people. Yeah, I mean, what what they mean by a pacifist run in a game like Fallout Three would probably mean running through areas, getting shot at, and pressing click on the objective, and then running away from it again. Mm. Like I, what I think this might be hinting towards is that there might be different ways to complete your objectives and they could be non-violent ways like you you know there's there was hacking and stuff and other kinds of technolog technological things you could be able to let's say lock a room with some raiders in it so they can't come out and attack you it's just an example of how they might do that so what that hopefully means is that there are multiple paths to objectives that's me reading into it a lot more than it actually says in the article no they can't they just by by design though and even in the fall in fallout 3 and any of the bethesda games that there is multiple paths to most objectives because it's quite open it's quite open but there's not i wouldn't say there's multiple 
ways to get there. You usually go into a, an environment or a building or a situation and you have to get to a certain place and then do something when you get there and usually kill everything in your way before you get there. There's not that many ways around it. You can sometimes use the environment to get kills or use like hacking and stuff to get through certain doorways. Yeah. It might be just a deeper like implementation of that idea, which the more they talk about adding more stuff to Fallout 4, the more I want to play it. So that's yeah. a good thing as far as I'm concerned. I think it's going to be uh, it's going to be one of my games of the year uh, uh, whenever it does come out. It's this year, it's, isn't it? Out in November. God, September. Oh, Loads of stuff's coming out in September, and I, I'm yeah. not going to have time. I need it's to... the autumn Christmas release schedule think... is always where they put the biggest hitters, isn't it? Really. I think I'm going to quit my job. Simple as that. <laughs> Uh, next, right, so on to the Witcher news. Next Witcher 3 DLC. This already may have come out. 16th, it says. Is that 16th of... It must be the 16th of August. It must be. Uh, it's the, the next DLC is basically New Game Plus DLC, and New Game Plus um, is different for every type of game, but usually it gives you the same game where you can start your car you know, with your same experience, same items, and you can, you know, it's usually harder, uh, some extra things going on in the game. Anyway, so the things that they've listed for this is stronger enemies, experience, and your items carry over. If your character isn't level 30 by the time you finish the game, it's going to get bumped to level 30. Uh, you can select any difficulty level from the start of the new thing, so you can go back to easy if you really want to, I suppose. Um, you get an ad additional achievement, woohoo, and you get a clearing portion, uh, Clearing potions are just those that give you, like, allow you to clear all your stats. You can get them from a few merchants in the game. So, again, to be fair, it's probably the, the maybe not the least interesting DLC they've done, but it's not. I'm not that bothered about it. By the time I've completed the game, I don't think I'll ever play it again because oh. I think I'll have had my fill by then. <laughs> yeah, I don't plan on doing a new game plus on it because I'm already put in a lot of hours and I don't see the end in sight just yet either. I've got more to go. So Yeah, I haven't played it for a couple of weeks now. It's Terraria's taken my life over, so yeah. Um, next bit of Witcher news Witcher 3 1.08 patch is getting released soon. I don't have a date for it, but this new patch, let me just have a look. It's got a, a whole list of, of new stuff. The main things is a uh, performance improvements, and uh, we've got quite a few fixes, etc. And I think that's about it. It's just fixes. There's no new features. Mm. A few new achievements. Uh, quest fixes. Oh, yeah. Prepar preparatory features paving the way for the introduction of the new Game Plus feature. There's a few things with the last patch that they've fixed. That's it, basically. I shall paste those notes into chat for people. And The Witcher 3, I don't know why I've got two there, but The Witcher 3 tabletop game has been revealed for mid-2016. I'm not sure how this is going to work. Have any of you guys had a look at it? I've seen the previous uh, tabletop game. How did that uh, sort of work? It's... I don't think it was anything to do with the game, the last one. I think it was just, you know, a kind of like a Dungeons & Dragons roll a dice, you encounter so-and-so, you do this yeah. thing. I, never... I imagine you probably don't all play as witches either. <laughs> it's oh. not like, you, you have chosen witcher class. Oh. <laughs> you probably get a... Well, there's different schools, isn't there? So they might have different skills. Yeah. Different schools, True. but there's also a lot of other people in the witcher, isn't there? There's dwarfs, yeah. there's sorceresses, there's wizards. Wait, who are yeah, as powerful wizards. or more powerful than, than a witcher, yeah. Good yeah. call. Good call. Not sure I'll be bothered about that. I don't have really... The, the, the amount of time and effort it takes to set up tabletop games, having done Warhammer in the past, it's not it's not something I think appeals to me now. Not when I'm... Honestly, mate, yeah. is, is Gwent was in there. Yeah, how's I was, it? Still, oh, still Gwent. <laughs> I was reading through the patches, uh, the notes, to see if there's any mention of Gwent, but there isn't. I still don't the, know if um, they're, they're doing that. My biggest exposure to a tabletop game, seriously, is uh, watching the community episodes, the Dungeons & Dragons episodes of Community. That's the most I know about tabletop games. I've don't never get, played one. Don't get me wrong, I had a hell of a lot of fun playing Warhammer back in the day. Lots of fun in lots of different areas, but it was a full-time kind of consuming thing. You, you, you spent time painting your figures, you spent time making your scenery. Then when you did play a game, it took you at least a few hours to set it up properly. 
and then it took you however many days to play through the game depending on how much time you had spare and then each time you because each time you take a turn you have to work out every oh it's insane it depends on how many units you've got as well if you've got like a 5000 point army or something you know you've you've all got i don't know maybe maybe 100 units or something to move every turn and, mm -hmm. and you have to calculate heights and you have to argue with with the other player about how high scenery is whether or not it's low scenery or high scenery. yeah and every tabletop game has those kind of problems Okay, so um, we'll just talk about Windows 10 stuff. Windows 10 has now reached 14 million installs. I'm going to bet that it's gone up since that was originally put in the document. I was going to say, wasn't that 14 million on the first day? No, I don't think so. No, this is the first... Um, what, they're doing it in stages, aren't they? This is the first stage. This was the 31st of July. It was only launched <coughs> On the okay. what, sorry, 29th? 29th. Okay, that's uh, quite a lot then, isn't it? It must be considerably more by now, I would have thought. Because yeah. uh, the way I understand that they've been rolling out the upgrade is that they've been waiting for people to confirm that a certain hardware configuration works. And then, obviously, um, the people that have kind of like pre-ordered it, they've already submitted their hardware configuration. And then when the compatibility is coming, then they issue out the, the go command, yeah. as far as I understand it. But also, you can you can force it as well, which is what I've done, because it's a, it's a custom build PC. The chance of someone else having the exact same configuration as me is a lot lower. Yeah, yeah. So well, I decided to do it manually. Same here, but I've actually got a, a motherboard that I regret getting, which I don't think many um, enthusiasts would get, if you know what I mean. It's, it's a, a lower cost one. And I think I probably would have compatibility problems. Okay, so yeah, okay, so that's still fourteen millions, quite a lot. I mean, I don't know. It's obviously there's a lot more computer users in the world or device users in the world, but because of course this covers mobiles as well, doesn't it? And uh, the mobile, and... mobile launch hasn't happened yet. It's only tablets and computers. Okay, tablets, laptops, and computers. Um, uh, at the moment, the the Windows Phone Ten launch is going to be November, I think. So they're going to start rolling that. That's going to be down to individual carriers. Yeah, and um, that, I think that'll be easier for them in general, though, won't it? Oh, yeah, yeah, because they've, they've got a much more controlled hardware set. Um, it says here that uh, that the plan is for them to reach 1 billion devices with Windows 10. By Skynet, 10. I'm telling you. Skynet. Genesis. Take over the world. Genesis with a with an inexplicable Y in there. In, in the Gen Y is... is yeah, in the place that you don't expect it to be in when, even though you've got to put a Y in it, Genesis. Why have you got to put a Y in it again? Because because it's not Genesis. It's as in, they don't, want, they don't want to give Phil Collins any money. That's what it is. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's the only other connection to the word yeah. Genesis that exists. What, what does it mean otherwise? It's just Nothing. Driving the last spike. That's it. I've never right. heard of her. Um, other Windows 10 <laughs> news. You can now get the Windows 10 version of Minecraft for free. Or oh, you can't get it yet. You can pre-book it. If you've got Windows 10. What was the... Oh, this is last week's news, so just let me remind myself. Uh, um, I think that that's supposed to be... If you have the previous version of Minecraft, you can upgrade to the Windows 10 version for free. That's it. And I think you can also, if you haven't got the previous version, you can get the, the 10 beta for a significantly reduced price. Right, okay. 10 quid or something. But I, I still don't think I'll bother. Yeah, I think that ship's very much sailed fair for me. It's, it's, I might even, the thing is, I might even get into it and love it now, that's the thing. Mm. But I don't know, I don't like 3D builders. I like the two, I like the 2D side of these things. I, t I take that back. I do like 3D builders. I don't know what I'm talking about. All right. Um, we mentioned it a little bit earlier. No Man's Sky. The No Man's Sky dev is considering Oculus. This is a bit of clickbait. This is kind of, again, conjecture at this stage. But he's basically said that it isn't a priority, but they're thinking of uh, potentially implementing it at some point. Yeah, well, they're still up in the air about their... Uh, the Oculus being used on the consoles as we talked about a while ago because you know Sony are pushing their own uh, VR tech to go with the PlayStation 4 so that's all a little bit you know 
we'll have to see how that pans out. That's just <laughs> yeah, it just sounds like a little bit of conjecture, a little bit of spin, a little bit of uh, hype, uh, inflation that probably might not really lead anywhere. Uh, it's, uh, it's it does there to create a bit of a buzz, isn't it, to try and get more interest back into the uh, hardware, I think. There's a lot of No Man's Sky uh, dev, dev talk going on at the moment. He's going to a lot of shows, he's doing a lot of things, so I imagine people are just picking up the littlest things that he's saying and, you know, doing stuff. Because it's, I mean, it is a game that's got a lot of hype around it, but I, we know that it's not going to live up to the hype, I don't think. I think uh, it's uh, worthwhile giving, uh, giving Mythalar a bit of a... I mentioned seeing as how he said that he's actually on holiday in Spain. Yes, well done, oh, well done. But I, I was <laughs> going to mention that earlier, but I got carried away with the news. But yes, thanks, thanks for tuning in, Myth, while you're uh, and, and adjusting your holiday. adjusting your uh, time zones to Stealing, accordingly. You know, well, well, one hour of it. It's probably easier wherever he is to do it. It's an hour <laughs> ahead, isn't it? So yeah, is it is it only one in Spain? <laughs> yeah. There uh, you go. So yeah, so that he's considering Oculus, and that's that's about it. So let's ignore that rest of that. Now, this news scares me a little bit. Mm. Final Fantasy VII remake, and this is something we've been we've been dreading. Fucking knew it. Yep, knew it. Final Fantasy VII remake, dramatic changes to combat. However, when you read the article, the devs say we're not going to change it that much, but they've used the word dramatic to describe it and they said oh we're just updating it we're just making it more mod uh, but we're keeping some of the plot elements so basically cloud's going to have spiky yellow hair and a big sword and a, maybe a big sword might even have i don't know he might have a big ipad or something <laughs> and um what uh, Ares uh, uh, might die sorry spoiler <laughs> in 1997 was it that it came out 91 that it's such a commonly known fact that I've not even played that far and I know it happens. Everybody yeah. knows it happens. Hey, hey, Sam, you might actually be able to play through the entire game, though, of the I remake. So. I don't know. I'm like, it's not... I'm actually, I'm actually slightly tempted to download it because I think I can download it off the PSN and give it a crack at some point. But uh, we just said earlier, there's some more games coming out this year that are just going to like eat my time. Mm -hmm. Um and it's a lower priority for me because you know I obviously I borrowed your copy for a while and I was enjoying it to a degree. I did find a, the, the central idea of just walking down an environment and then <laughs> battle comes in never stops, never stops being an issue for me. Like I just don't like it, but I was enjoying the world and stuff, so I could get through that game. I think I what could was get it? through enemy, it and enjoy it. Uh, there was two. There's two materials: one to increase the enemy rate and one to drop the enemy rate, the fight rate. What was it called? Enemy plus or enemy, enemy up, enemy down. Enemy up, I think. Oh god, uh. call ourselves Final Fantasy VII fans. Yeah, well, but it depends what the make, the changes made to the combat are. I mean, people have said no, it that doesn't. Final Fantasy thirteen. It's uh, fine. The combat's fine. How it is? What's why? For the style of the game, it was. I don't see how you why you would change the combat because it was all menu based. The so it's, it's not as if yeah. you can make it more responsive or make it more dynamic. They're not making it. They said that they're not going to go like we're not going to make it into a shooter or an RTS game, or we're not going to change the genre. But they're changing the combat style. So that basically says to me that they might be changing the material system. Yeah, they, they could. It could be as simple as changing the menu interface. For all you know, that the menu interface is a different all kind fine, of menu interface. Same. Dramatic, though. I keep yeah. bringing back to dramatic. This is the one would... worries me that, that you don't use unless that's a, a translation issue, which I think it's very unlikely that. that They'd be very careful about what they say about this. All they need to do for this game is just make it look good. Like, that's what you guys want, isn't it? Yeah. Have the same game, but looking uh, awesome. Yeah. They've got to keep the same game, the same dialogue, the same, the well, same mechanics, the same battle system. I don't know. Some music. of Barrett's dialogue. Some of the dialogue needs changing. <laughs> like if you I were don't know, to... because it's, it, it's one of them things now where if, if, if you... Because it was a really bad English uh, translation, but that's kind of given some of its charm now. Yeah, I agree, actually. And I think that, that is... if you were to take that away, then it just wouldn't be feel the same. That's part of its personality, isn't it? Is it the is. dialogue. The same well, way that we talked about on Metal Gear. You know. graphically. They might need to re-record the music, because that, was that, wasn't, uh, that wasn't a great quality, I don't think. Or some of it wasn't. There's a lot of... A lot of uh... A lot of games from that time have that kind of really slightly um, lovably awkward like tra translation from Japanese to English. 
yeah. which does give it a lot of personality and character to my mind actually you probably yeah I, I mean, I'm not even a big fan but I'd be like if you changed all the Barrett's dialogue even though I just said it then he wouldn't be Barrett anymore would he he'd be, no, no, and... he'd be politically correct black man that's not uh, it's like, as offensive as he used to be. Imagine if they re-released um, like Zero Wing without all your base I belong to, wasn't it? It just wouldn't be the same. Yeah, exactly. Weirdly, I've just been looking for uh, Final Fantasy VII uh, bad translations. Clicked on a link, and the first thing is cats. All your base I belong to us. <laughs> <laughs> it's on Kota Two. Kot- oh my god, Kota Two. Sorry. And here's a link yeah. for anybody who cares. But so, again, but the, without any details as to what those combat changes are, it's kind of like we've got to see. I mean, it, I see when it starts getting development and they start talking about it realistically. They're not. There's not much information on that yet, is there? That seems to be something they're going to they're putting there to deliberately upset people. Though, like, why even mention it? They're going to take the combat system that people love and just not do that. Unless what they're doing is they are just testing the water. They're releasing some statement like that to see what the kickback is, and if it's massively negative, then they won't do it. Yeah, that's just maybe. I mean, I, I, it's got the Final Fantasy VII moniker, and I'll probably buy it anyway. I won't be. I don't think I'll be rushing to buy it, but I, I read. I don't know. I trust them. I, I want to trust them to. Uh, do I though? When I think about it, all of the other Final Fantasies after that are awful in my eye. Well, no, nine and ten were apparently quite good, but the eight I, I really didn't get on with, and twelve is fucking atrocious. And I don't know about the online ones; I've never played them, but I just thirteen can't... is supposed to be pretty bad, isn't it? Was oh, it? Thir- it is. You know, I get twelve and thirteen mixed up. It's supposed. It's thirteen with lightning, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I just got bored of that about 10 minutes into the game I was like what's the point it looks good but you know what's the point yeah yeah I, I mean for me this is their, their their kind of one and only chance to try and get our generation back playing Final Fantasy games because if if you look at the demographic of Final Fantasy games now it's it's mainly teenage girls I don't is think it? that Final Fantasy is yeah. is is a big hitter the way that it used to be with new releases, is it? No, well, I say that I, th- I think ten and eleven certainly were had a massive female fan base. Yeah, but Final Fantasy Seven sold oh. PlayStations. It yeah, was a yeah. console shifting game. Yeah, that was the impact that they used to have. I don't think they are. They they're just kind of like a thing that comes out, and yeah, they might have a fan base, but they're not like you have to get this game or you have to give this game a look. The way that a lot of you know, a new Grand Theft Auto comes out and it's like, oh, you've got to check this out. Final Fantasy comes out, people are like, yeah, well, I don't know. You know, for all, for all we know, these if, if that is the case and the demographic now is teenage girls, which I didn't know that, but that kind of makes sense when you say it. I, if that is the case, they may be changing Final Fantasy VII to appeal to that demographic. I would think that that would be a bum move because the potential earnings that they've got by getting the all the people I've bought the original engaged compared to the the relatively small populist have got of you know the teenage girls at like the tens and the elevens. I think it'd just be a stupid marketing move. Mm. If they were a remake, a full... sorry, for a remake of that game, why bother remaking it? Just make Final Fantasy sixteen or whatever. Like do the next one then. Yeah, and if you still caught in that market your pocket for you know a rainy day, where have you? Yeah, this guy are sick. That's what I think of it. Is that another one? The Cenaries scenari- quote from Final Fantasy VII. This I've guy, Arsic. I, I keep getting that one from uh, Symphony of the Night, which is not even a Final Fantasy game. What is a man? A miserable pile of secrets. That is, <laughs> that's a beautiful, poetic <laughs> little quote. I like that. <laughs> Uh, Steam accounts have been hacked due to a password flaw. Now, I watched a video about this as well. Uh, some some streamer put something on there. Some professional streamer, and I'm not sure who you can use the term professional that, that strongly, but let's say uh, someone who does a lot of streaming has um, had his account hacked because somebody saw his, his username and he didn't have Steam Guard turned on. I've got Steam Guard turned on. I've got Guard on everything on the internet these days. I've got two-step authentication all over the place, etc. It doesn't mean I'm not going to get hacked at some point, but still, you know, if the tills are there, use them. But anyway, so this guy's... Uh, someone's basically went onto onto his uh, 
reset password page, click reset password. When it asks you for your, uh, all right, that's it, sorry, you click a link, it asks you to reset your password, you send the reset password email, and then the next page asks you to enter a code or your the password that it sent you. You just click next, and it let you change your original password. It didn't even need the confirmation for the, the last password. And as I said, there's a link and a video uh, I'm placing in the chat now. But anyway, that, that was last week. I'm, I'm pretty sure Steam jumped on it immediately and fixed it as ASAP. But it only applies to only applied to accounts that had been uh, that we didn't have Steam Guard on. <coughs> I thought that was quite so interesting. So keep your Steam Guard up, kids. That's what the lesson in that news article is. Steam Guard, you old man. Stone Guard. <laughs> I said Steam Guard. Oh, sorry. Um, okay, right. I don't know if any of you follow or care about wrestling anymore, professional wrestling. The only thing that I care about is Rowdy Roddy Piper's died. Yes, yes. It's, it is quite sad that... I watched They Live last night just as a bit of a... We've, oh. we've got it on the list to, to watch this weekend, I think. Um, anyway, so... Um, recently, Hulk Hogan has been exposed as a racist as a massive racist he's basically went I, I read some of the transcripts and I haven't heard the, mm. the dialogue but he's basically went on a massive rant uh, about his daughter Brooke who was going out with a black man at one point and I'm not going to repeat what he said but he said some pretty unsavory nasty things basically WWE have now completely knocked him out of all history he's been removed from the hall of fame he's been removed from every bit of merchandise bearing in mind that he was at the moment he's the general manager which is like the guy who supposedly you know obviously it's it's acting but he he um he organizes all the fights and sets up all of the bouts etc how old is he uh, he must be in his 60s now That's still wrestling though still doing wrestling 61 <coughs> six foot seven oh he's a big one yeah don't don't fully believe that either because the do the tape does lie a little bit sometimes of these things apparently his daughter's come forward and said on his behalf that he didn't mean it yeah well either way well, yeah. I, you know they've, they've wiped him uh, wiped him entirely out of it and they've also removed the reason that i'm bringing this up on a gaming talk show is my, my wife's really into wrestling so i kind of have to listen to stuff about it anyway but um They've wiped him from WWE 2K16, the new game that's coming out, completely, and they've replaced him with Arnie. And they've replaced him with the Terminator as a character. Yeah. Now, the reason they've done this is because the last... I'm sorry I know so much about this. <laughs> I just realised how, how much of a wrestling geek I'm turning into these days. Um, uh, the last wrestlemania or the one before that term the, they had a terminator kind of set up for triple h when he came out triple h is what uh, the current kind of uh, i think he's the owner's son or i don't know i don't know what it is i don't know exactly who he is but he's he's one of the like the bad guys the heels as they call them and he came out to a terminator kind of theme um and arnie was has been involved in a lot of wwe publicity and stuff recently so that's why they replaced him with terminator but there's a video on this that you mm. should if, if you even remotely know anything about wwe you should watch it's quite funny uh, and i'm gonna post, paste that into chat as well but yeah i think it's just weird that they're removing him and uh... it's it's a, what my issue with that as a whole and i know that the game company is just towing the line they've been told they've got to do it so they're doing it and the fact that they've made this little video and done it in that way means that they're doing it with a sense of humor and the tongue in their cheek which is nice, but the WWE and wrestling in general is not known, should we say, for its all-inclusive political correctness when it comes to how it represents people that aren't white. That's the nicest way I'm going to say it. And the fact that they've done that to Hulk Hogan across the board is a little bit, a little bit harsh. But the game companies just towing the line, so it's not I their issue. I think it's, it's very, they're just very, doing as they're told. I think it's very harsh. I mean, fair enough. Some it's of the things, critical. not all, not some of the things. All of the things he said were wholly unacceptable, and he's admitted that himself. You know, it, it should not have come out. It, to be fair, I don't know how the hell it came out. I, can't, I didn't read that far into the story, but still, beside the point, he said them. Unfortunately, the company has to respond in some way, and that's the these days. That's the that's the only way that they can respond. 
Yeah, um, they, they fired him. They fired him is fine, but I think erasing him from the history of everything is a little bit. They do that with a lot of. Um, well, you know what? They, they did it with a guy called Chris Benoit as well, and he was he murdered his wife and children. <laughs> he went on a rampage and actually, actually physically did that. It wasn't a storyline in WWE. <laughs> it yes. was actually what happened. Um, Shouldn't be laughing about it. No, no, out. no. It was it was a pretty nasty tragedy when it happened, I believe, but. Yeah. Anyway, so, that's they've, not they've really tre- our place to comment. No, but they've, tre- they've treated him the same way as that, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But then again, who who are we to say that the, the level of racism that he exposed is not as bad as that? Depends on how you look at it and what you know, what your beliefs are. But anyway, so anyway, he's he's removed from WWE 2K. None of us play it. Doesn't affect us in the slightest. But I thought it was interesting that Arnie's been replaced by him. And the little video they did for that was quite funny as well. The, the little video is really good, actually, especially if you've watched any WWE recently and you're any, anywhere like remotely into it. I imagine Stag Beetle will be. Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure he's into WWE, but anyway, Stag Beetle in chat. He's uh, he's always talking about his NFLs and well, all of his sporty computer games. So he might even play WWE. Okay, Journey of Light Steam game is a scam. Claims hat. Claims to have eight levels, but only has one unbeatable level. Mm. Yeah. So, has anyone else read the full the full link that was put in there? I don't know. I'm guessing that might have been a Lou link. Um, I actually don't know. That, you know, um, you know. It's something that I saw on Reddit this morning. I only managed to read about the first third of it and scan through the rest of it, but I thought it might be a good point of uh, discussion. Uh, I read through it. Obviously, there was he, he goes in the guy who does the article goes into detail and breaks down the game's files and code. And things like that, um, more than to, to the way to the level that I don't really understand it. But the, what he's said in the article is that the game is sold with, you know, you've got things like achievements and levels and stuff all there for these eight levels, yeah. which are just not there. They're not there. You buy the game, it tells you it's got this much content and it hasn't. Is and it the, devs keep, the dev keeps going on Twitter and other things and saying, oh, you've got to do this. Here's a hint for getting past level one. Or oh, here's another hint for getting past level one. And you can't. Mm. Yeah, there's apparently if you look at the Steam achievements, there's only him that's got like uh, yeah. Level yeah, two yeah. Three achievements. No one else has got them. Yeah, so exactly. Either, it's just a fiendishly difficult game, or what this guy's saying is true. Looking at the the level of detail he went through in trying to like pass open the files and see what was in them, it looks kind of legitimate. Mm. Do you mean the game is legitimate or oh, the, is, complaint is, 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 the complaint is the complaint is? And this is one of these things where the guys release the game with the intention that he will update it, kind of it's like secretly as it goes along. But obviously, if if, if that was the idea, it looks to back uh, have backfired slightly. Yeah. Hmm. So um, I mean, I'm not a regular Steam user. I, I don't know what uh, what sort of safeguards or issues there are that, that, that about you know. Yeah, well, there is now you, you can you... get refunds, and and to be fair, if the game gets pulled, then the developer. I think Steam will refund those and charge a developer for it now. There's a lot mm. better uh, control over that. Uh, well, there it, was... It, go on, Steve. I was going right, to say, uh, um, Steam. It, it does say in the link um, that his sales have considerably dropped off and he's actually started to lose money because of refund claims. That's what I was so going to say. So Steam must be honouring them. And also there's, um, there's that rating system now where you can actually put negative feedback next to certain developers in Steam. Is that right? Probably, I, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, they, uh, they said that you could flag it as uh, as uh, not... It's, it's basically not quite saying false advertising, but more or less saying doesn't provide what it legally uh, says it should provide. Legal violation. There you go, legal violation. So it's not providing what it says. It's not doing what it says in the tin, essentially. It's saying there's eight levels and there's only one. Um, there you go. It just kind of sucks, though. It kind of it, sucks. It does, but... You know, there's there's always been scams on the internet, especially, and I think Steam's no exception. There's definitely other uh, there's definitely other games that have been scams in the past that I've heard about. Okay, so um, there's a, a game that you guys may or may not have heard of called Mirror's Edge. You must have heard of it at least, anyway, if, even if you haven't played it, which was fair to middling. I'd say it was the story was a bit meh, uh, the original game, um, but the new game that's coming out, Mirror's Edge Catalyst. I've been following it quite closely because I'm interested in parkour in-game, especially in the FPS side of things. And uh, it looked to me so far is looking amazing. It's looking really cool. It's looking like it's a bit more open world and a bit less linear than the previous games. Uh, there's a video, there's a trailer that they just released, and the trailer makes the parkour look 
very dynamic let's say it makes it look a lot more uh, a lot more interesting than the previous game and <coughs> you can do a lot more moves like one thing i saw she faith the girl in it or you the person playing faith obviously um ran along a wall grabbed hold of a pole and swung round the pole and kicked someone in the face now i don't know if that was scripted or not but it's cool that the parkour and the combat are kind of melding into each other now because it didn't used to be like that in the last uh, last game that sounds pretty cool I, I don't think that i've watched the trailer yet i will give it a look because i had the concept of the original game interested i think i played your copy of it a bit but mm -hmm. It didn't interest me enough to keep going. I got a little bit... It's very, very samey, the first game. Um, I like the parkour, but some of the parkour tricks are just like, right, why can't I get up there easily? What's what's going on here? I just You have to be millimeter precise with some of them, and it's like, there's no point. I'm just going to quit. <laughs> <coughs> but anyway, it's um, the new game has got... It's got multiple routes to destinations as well, which is, again, another thing about the first game, that it was very linear. Um the the parkour's just generally more dynamic and more interesting it looks like there's you, as you run it as you wall running you can like grab a pipe and then shimmy up the pipe and then maybe i don't know traverse over somewhere else and do a backflip off the wall and things like that <coughs> excuse me and uh there's i said parkour based attacks so I'm, I'm quite looking forward to it and i think it's on my watch list i think i'll definitely go for a pc release though if there is one When's it supposed to be released? Is it next year or? Not 100% sure. It was announced at E3. Well, it was detailed at E3, so mm. I don't know. Uh, that You would suggest that would be in the next year or two, wouldn't you? Yeah, I should think so. Um, I said, uh, Mythalos just said he's really hyped for Mirror's Edge. I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm hyped, but it's on my watch list, as I said. I'm going, I'm going for that. Yeah. Oh, so Sam, finally, finally you are here. For, for me to talk about some Metal Gear Solid news with. Because every time there's been a little bit of news, you've been off doing your <laughs> real life stuff. and um, Don't. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, the minimum... And this Actually, this actually doesn't concern you whatsoever, but the minimum requirements have been announced for Metal Gear Solid 5 on PC. Uh, just run through those very quickly. Minimum is 64-bit OS, uh, Windows, obviously. Intel Core i5, 3.4 gig... 4 gig memory, GTX 650, uh, to 28 gigabytes of hard drive space. Again, this, this hard drive space is getting ridiculous, isn't it, with all these games? It's a good job it's cheap these days. Yeah, it is very cheap these days. But, and sound card, no one cares about the spec for a sound card because everybody's got at least a DirectX 9 compatible sound card, yeah. Uh, recommended, it's 8 gig RAM, i7, 3.6 gig, quad core or better. GTS 780, and it's 4K. It's 4K compatible, which I, I don't cool. know if... I imagine 4K will need better specs than that, though, because 7, 760 isn't going to run 4K. This one doesn't quite sit right with me with this. Yeah, it feels like it's it should got, be more than that. You've got a GTX 760 right, um, graphics card, which is two generations old now. Mm -hmm. um, I think that one was... A 760 is only available <coughs> for a maximum of two gigabytes of memory as well. Then the CPU that accompanies it, it's there's only there's only two mainline Intel i sevens that are actually better than that. Mm. You can only get a three point six, a three point nine, or a four. Obviously, there's turbo versions, but you don't be really running the CPU with turbo all the time. Yeah, the well, it's not the the gigahertz or the the clock speed doesn't actually matter that much these days, does it? It's more about the number of cores and the the way that the cores are and the no, what's it called? The die size, um, the twenty-eight nanometers or fourteen nanometers with the new Bloomfield stuff that's coming out. Um, but yeah, no, you're right though. I, I doesn't quite. Say, um, to be fair, the memory eight gig sounds like not a lot these days. It's, it seems. I mean, the expectation these days is that your GPU, your physics engine, all that, do the majority of the work. At least. Games these days should leave your CPU pretty much alone, apart from, you know, running the basic computational things that you expect them to. Um, you know, like the, like the mathematical side of it. Hmm. Uh, but it's, this... the, it's the amount of pixels that it needs to fill on the, on the screen itself, and especially if this is going to be running 4K, a 760 is not going to cut it. That's if you have 4K, of course. Yeah. But a 760 with, with an i7, it just seems like a bit... You'd expect it to be... Yeah, I've 
if you use an i7, you'd want like at least like an eighth or a ninth generation. But I believe you can't run you can't run a lot of these GTS cards without a pretty good CPU as well. Because again, I don't know the technical ins and outs, but I believe that there's a limitation. There's a bottleneck somewhere. Yeah, you need some of that at least and... a Haswell chipset, um, more or less. But the Haswells start at like you know, a base level of like a two point two quad core, uh, which is like the four seven eight five or something. Hmm. Uh, the that's the eleven fifty chipset, um, which is I mean it, it's it's still a decent CPU. You know, it's not it, it's not like we sniffed at, but. I don't know, it, it, it just seems very CPU heavy, that spec. So are you predicting possibly a, another Arkham doesn't Knight. work doesn't work PC port? Yeah. Well, that's something which... Uh, it, it's, it's the PC release is now being announced on the same day as the console yeah. releases, which is all good news for me. But... I mean, the thing I was thinking was that, seeing as it, it is primarily a console game, um... You know the PC versions of these have never historically been fantastically optimized. No. Is it a case of that they're using the CPU to do a lot of the the work because it's been ported? So the CPU is in effect emulating a lot of the graphical work, whereas if it was developed for PC, you'd expect the GPU to be doing a lot of that. Don't know. Time will tell, won't it? it and it's still, I'm still torn about whether I should go for. I should I, now. I don't need to wait. I'm even more torn about should I go for the PC version or should I go for the PS4 version? I'd go for console. I'd... It's what the design intent was. I know, I know. It'll probably run more smoothly on your PS4, like on day one. I had this thing where, like, I'm now, because I've seen it happen so much, where I just expect the PC release of a multi platform game to just not work for a while. Unless, which is shit. unless it's been written by a PC developer. Specifically, because that has happened a few, like The Witcher, for example. Oh, yeah, okay. The yeah, piece. I mean, I don't know if the consoles had any problems on release, did they, with The Witcher? Uh, actually, the the general consensus has been that the PC version is a superior version for that it's, game. It's superior, and that used to be how it was all the time as well. I mean, apparently, that in order to get people buying on Steam as well, they're, they're releasing additional content for Steam buyers, uh, for Steam purchasers, rather. Um, you get a documentary, or probably on the making of the game of some sort, this is when we fired Kojima, etc. Um, this is this is the this is the the moment of uh, of when we decided he was going. Behind the scenes footage again, probably more arguments in Japanese and extra in-game items, which I don't give a fuck about. I swear to. I don't honest. give a shit about them. I actually I'm intrigued by the uh, the documentary stuff because the documentaries and the behind the scenes stuff they did on Metal Gear Solid Two and Three. Where for a fan like me, were quite enjoyable. It is a lot about the dev. It's about the influences. Like the Metal Gear Solid Two one, there was a whole section on the military advisors and the fact that they got all these teams to do all the authentic movements and all that kind of shit. Yeah. And I was like, that's really cool. That and the research they did into tankers for the tanker section, that kind of stuff. I'm into that because I think, being that what these kind of games are, there'll be like just loads of info about that kind of stuff and the research they've done. I, it's just for a Metal Gear geek like myself, that'd be quite cool. That's I, like an incentive for me. I am actually really pumped about this game as well. It's it's one of the ones I'm I'm most looking forward to. Unfortunately, I'm on holiday the day it comes out anyway, so I can't be I can't get it day one anyway. So there's no point in me pre-ordering even if I really wanted to, and I tend to not these days anyway. Uh, pre-orders yeah. apparently on Steam also get Metal Gear Solid Ground Zeroes for free. Already got it, Ground Zero, so I don't care that much. The only real incentive for me buying it on Steam is that I will be able to get it cheaper than I can on a console. But I might just see to see if if it's crap, if it's awful. I might read quite a few reviews first and uh, just refund it and, and get it on the console. You could do no, no, you? no, no. I mean, I'll see if what what other people's reviews. Oh are. right, yeah, yeah. Oh, the internet. Oh, it, the internet will tell me if it's awful before I need to. Before it's a I good buy point. It. You'll have had a few days of grace of other people buying it for you to find out, won't you? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so on to on to the other clusterfuck that is Arkham Knight on the PC that we've uh, there's a few bits of news about it. So we've got a new patch coming out, which is a 4.3 gigabyte patch. Mm. Uh, Pretty big. Not for the PC though. This is for the consoles. The PC is apparently they said it was going to get released next month, so September, but they're saying now that they're going to release an interim patch 
this month. Uh, so the interim patch means it'll limp along a bit, limp until the real until the real patch turns up. Yeah, and that's if they even get a real patch. They just, I mean, they've spent so much time obviously building DLC content, building console content. They're not they're not giving the PC version as much <clears throat> as much attention as it blatantly needs. It just Shame. makes me think. I, I, I've enjoyed their game so much. I'm really disappointed that they're doing this. It's a damn shame because I told you I've completed the game and it's a good game. That's the pro that's what makes it mm. so bad. Actually, if it was like a, just some shitty game, you'd be like, "Well, ah, it's a wank game. Don't waste your time with it anyway." But you know, for people that want to play it on PC, there's a good game in there for you. You're just gonna have to wait for some reason for it to work. I might try it after the interim patch and see if it's bearable. I mean, it's still it's bearable on mine anyway. I just I want the better experience rather than the mediocre experience, you know. Mm. Okay. Have you guys heard of this game called Rocket League that everyone on the internet is talking about at the moment? I have, and it looks like it might be quite a good laugh, actually, multiplayer. I've, I've seen quite a lot of uh, like trick shots and Robbie yeah. being posted uh, on Reddit and Vought and other such well, things. The, the fact that it's got PC and PS4 crossplay might be interesting for us. That's exactly yeah, one of the reasons that, uh, that I wanted to talk about it, because one, we don't get to play with you much, Sam, and two, I'd like to see how it works. You know, I like to see... It's like that Portal uh, Portal 2 crossover that you can do between console mm. and PC. We haven't actually tried it, but it, yeah. it's it's easier to do that because you don't need quick reactions. You know, it's not a Twitch game. You don't need to, you don't need to make a decision quickly, really. You can just solve the puzzles together. This one is a little bit more action-based, so pad versus keyboard and mouse. I don't know how that's going to play out well it's a so, racing combat football <coughs> game so keyboard and mouse has never been the best combination for drive no but it's still if you get good at it, it's still arguably more you know it's more you've got more control well no actually no the keyboard side you don't anyway but it's still obviously that, that would leave that would leave pc users at a disadvantage then wouldn't it unless you're using a pad of course but well, you've yeah, got a little so wheel. Should, uh, a better frame rate Yes, maybe. Well, it doesn't look like it's a particularly demanding game anyway, so... But um, it, it reminds me of Carball from uh, the UT days. Very much yeah. like Carball, but with actual leaderboards and leagues and, you know, the, the more interesting elements of online gameplay. Organised in gameplay, anyway. But yeah, mm. it's interesting. Maybe we should uh, give it a try. Maybe there might be a demo out there we can have a go, go of. Yeah, I kind of want to try my hands on it a little bit first to see if I enjoy it, and then might be might be one topic of it. Well, I think by the look, looking at all of the trailers, etc., it's it's fun with friends. Essentially, yeah. it's not. It, I don't think it's something that you'd probably enjoy. Well, some people might, but I, I probably wouldn't enjoy it on my own personally. Okay, so another game that's out on the first of September that I've got my eye on is Mad Max, new mm. Mad Max game, not tied into the game apparently, so it's not a licensed you know tie-in. It's still licensed, obviously, but I've been watching the trailer uh, today, and the trailer, again, does its job in that it makes it sound appealing, makes it sound cool. I'm not sure... It doesn't I... show that much gameplay, though. It shows no. lots of stuff that could be gameplay, but it's all very quick-cutting snippets that you don't really get. I don't really get a feel from that trailer of what the gameplay is like. What I can kind of see is, because it's from the guys who did Just Cause, I'm thinking, is it an open-world driving combat-based type taking over bases type game I guess yeah Seems like it could be that that sounds like it and I'm hoping it's not going to be another take over this base unlock an area of the map type game you know mm. hope there's a bit more to it I mean you have to build your uh, magnum opus the uh, the car that he's got uh, you have to uh, build that and upgrade that as you go along but the I don't know the story sounds interesting as well it sounds like it's got a bit of a bit of give to it at least and it's a completely separate story or a separate uh, timeline maybe from the mm. from the originals and from the new film that's come out but yeah one, it's on my list and it's uh, it looks fairly interesting I think I'll keep an eye on it and see how it comes out well, I've not seen enough gameplay in that trailer yet to make it look that interesting to me so also, far also it's out on the 1st of September and they're still not releasing gameplay trailers so that's int we'll interesting see. isn't it we shall see Okay, I shall let um, let you do these last two then, Steve. I imagine these are yours. Oh, these are mine, actually. Okay. Um, 
Well, this was it's the weird one that I just. It, so Peter Dinklage, uh, who voiced, and I can't remember the name of the character because I've never played Destiny, but he basically voiced the Guilty Spark equivalent on Destiny, the little robot that follows you around and tells you what to do uh, in Destiny. Um, the, the general criticism was that it, it was terrible voiceover job, uh, and he's being replaced. They're, rec- they're, they're taking him out of any future copies of the game sold and replacing him with Nolan North, who anybody who's played games will know is a very veteran video game voice actor who's done a lot of characters obviously very famous for uh, Nathan Drake nice did, politically uh, did, correct way of putting it there Sam I would have said he's a voice over whore voice over whore why because <laughs> he, he gets a lot of work he does job. it he does it he, he's a voice in everything in fact to the point of in Saints Row 4 there is a you know you've got character 1 character 2 character three. Nolan North is an option in that game. Uh, yeah. Do you know what the thing is though? You can say he's a voice over whore, but the man is goddamn good at it. He does a voice he does the penguin in Arkham City, and it's like you would never have guessed it if no someone hadn't told you. He does yeah. a voice in The Last of Us, and I'd, when you get to that point, I'd like you to try and figure out who it is if you can. Um because he doesn't sound like him at all. So he he's got a he's got his Nolan North voice, which is basically Nathan Drake. But he's a very good voice actor. The point is, he's a very good video game voice actor. And they're replacing him and taking all of Peter Dinklage's stuff out of any future versions of the game, including the original game and the DLC and all that. And it's now going to be Nolan North doing that voice instead and doing all that dialogue. Um, I just thought it was a strange and in, like weird bit of news. I don't care about Destiny at all, but I'm sure a lot of people did buy it. Well, Destiny's got and, a 10-year plan, so they have to try and keep people yeah, happy with it. It's it's going to be an ongoing online experience. Plus, the obvious, the other thing about it is that Peter Dinklage is unquestionably a very, very talented actor, but not all talented actors are good at doing voiceovers, particularly not on video games. Mm. Um, I get a situation that I really noticed it on was, say what you like about him, I thought Tobey Maguire did a pretty good job in the Spider-Man movies. He did not do a good job at doing the voiceover from the Spider-Man computer games. Right. He just didn't. He was just like, I gotta go over here and fight Dark Ark. For like, everything was like that, for like, all the games. So... I think people gave Peter English a lot of shit for doing the bad voiceover thing in that game. Um, and maybe he just wasn't well directed. He's not, voiceover's not his thing. It's like he's got a background in movies and theatre, so voiceover's not something that everybody is able to just jump into and do really well. I, so there, make of that what you will. Anybody that might have played Destiny or is into it, you're now going to get the smoothly familiar Nolan North tones instead of the uh, apparently slightly wank Tyrion Lannister tones that you had before that too peter dinklage is right yeah sorry Tyrion lannister from game of thrones uh, that's why everybody knows him from. game of thrones so I, I didn't notice him but is, is he in, sorry um, yeah is he in the he's in the, the x-men film as well oh my god no the, um fucking old film dead old film time bandits dead old. is he in time bandits I don't know, he'll have been dead young if he was, mate. Time bad is from the 80s, isn't he looks, it? He looks quite old, that's all. I just assumed. He uh, look, he's, he's probably in his... He look, I reckon he's probably 50 at a push, Peter Dink. He's probably younger than that. Time Bandits isn't that old, though, is it? It's 80s? Shouldn't it? I don't know, yeah. He would have been dead young if he was, not it? But I don't know. I've, do you know what? I've never seen Time Bandits all the way through. I, I think I've seen bits of it, bits and pieces of it, and never actually watched the whole... I've yeah, heard the name loads, but I've never ever looked him up, so I didn't know who he was. But now I do. So he's become that. famous because of Game of Thrones. Obviously, uh, he plays the character. He's the best written character in in it. You know, he's the most the best sense of humour. He's got all the witty lines and all that kind of shit. Fair um, enough. And then the last little bit of news, and this might only apply to anybody that's that's a fan of anime or this particular anime that was a huge deal when it came out. Uh, the Attack on Titan uh, game has been really, uh, announced from the developers of the Dynasty Wars series. Right. Uh, obviously there's a live action film of this coming out fairly soon as well, which I think is being made um, in Japan, so it's not like an American bastardization of the anime. I think it's actually being made in Japan with Japanese actors and stuff too. I heard it was Korean. Is it Korean? I think so. Ah. I don't see. I don't know if it could be the fact that it'd be a Korean studio work with a Japanese studio. I know it's based on a manga, so it definitely originates in Japan. Yeah. Uh, no gameplay details as of yet. It's just something that I think's been really announced fairly recently. For anybody that doesn't know what Attack on Titan is, it's um, I guess you call it a sort of fantasy 
game that's set in a, in a sort of different Earth to the Earth we live in, where humans, it sort of seems like it's set in the future and the past at the same time, because these humans are all walled off in these huge city, and these massive humanoid creatures called Titans just lumber about with really weird childlike faces, like really sort of uh, kind of goofy faces, wander around naked and eat people. And they can only be killed by stabbing them in the back of their neck. So all the heroes in the thing had this thing called 3D maneuver gear, which basically turns you into sword-wielding Spider-Man. And they like jump around with these cool wires and go Wah! through the air a lot and <laughs> kill Titans because it's anime. It's pretty cool. That's what they do, yeah. Um, so there's a game based coming out and a film. So yeah, it could be quite cool. It's just been announced as the trailer literally shows Eric Yeager going Wah! at a Titan. That's all the gameplay that you see. So <laughs> with, there you with go. Lots of moving <laughs> backgrounds going on, no doubt. Actually, to be fair to the show, they don't do that cheat of backgrounds. They actually have the backgrounds moving, as in the buildings going past. The animation for those scenes is actually genuinely spectacular. So if it's, they could capture it, that excitement in a game, it could be cool. It's normally uh, on the on the anime. It's actually CG, isn't it? Uh, it's it's the all background CG. Yeah. City. Yeah. Then the, the back the backgrounds are CG, and the characters are still rendered in two D. Yeah. Uh, it's well integrated, though. It looks pretty smooth. Um, so now, yeah, I don't know what that game, what that game is going to be like at all. But again, something that just piqued my interest. I've kind of got my eye on it. It could be terrible for all I know, but if they make a good game, I'll be well up for it. I'm more concerned whether or not they make a good movie first. Yeah, the movie could be terrible. I don't know. We'll see. Mm -hmm. We'll see. That's out next year, I think. So yeah, that's all the news. I think in it. It is Last... all the news. So unless you guys have anything else that you've popped into your head while we've been talking. I shall close the show. Thank you very much for everybody uh, who's watched. Sorry, Sam? I was going to say, you've not watched any of the trailers, but there have been a couple of uh, Gamescom Metal Gear Solid 5 trailers, but then you're not watching any, are you? No. I've seen, a few, I've seen enough to know that I want to play it to fuck. That's... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah I, I i i know there's a there's also a mother base trailer that they're um that they're talking about releasing soon if they haven't already released it and that's one i really want to avoid because i don't want to know what how awesome it's going to be uh mm. it sounds it sounds like it's right up my street it sounds like metal gear has, has done what i want from kind of a open world strategy if you know what i mean i'm hoping that the, the resource building and and collection stuff is going to be as good as I hope it's going to be and I don't see why it shouldn't be because I don't know it does look promising it just it looks look like it's promising. going to be amazing so yes thank you to everybody who has watched today and uh, contributed within chat uh, if you are interested in anything we do we have a website www.resonancearcade.com I'll say that right one day uh, we're all on all the social networks on facebook.com Facebook.com. I don't even know why we, we say that these days, but um, Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus, YouTube, forward slash Resonance Arcade on all of them. Thank you very much, and we shall see you next Wednesday at 7.30. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>